For centuries and even today, the scholars of Muhammadan Islam assert that both the Hebrew Bible and the New Testament are not the originals revealed to Moses and Jesus, but are the product of alterations and perversions by their later followers. On what basis can they prove their allegations? It was Ibn Khazim in 1064 who was the first Muhammadan to charge that the Bible has been corrupted and falsified by the followers of Moses and Jesus. This charge was made in a last ditch and desperate effort to defend Islam against Christianity because he came upon the many serious and unexplainable contradictions and differences between the Quran and the Bible. Believing by faith that the Quran is true and incorruptible, Ibn Khazim had absolutely no choice but to come to the conclusion that then it must be the current Bible that is false and untrue, especially since Muhammad instructed his followers to respect the Bible in the first place. Therefore, the present text must have been falsified by the Christians and the Jews after the time of Muhammad. His conclusions and arguments are not based on any original historical facts, but entirely upon his unshakable faith in the truthfulness and divine origin of the Quran. Many other exegetes did not accept or agree with his conclusions, among whom are many of the luminaries of Islam, such as Ali al-Tabari, al-Bukhari, al-Mas'udi, Abu Ali Hussein bin Sina, al-Ghazali, and Ibn Khaldun. In reality, it is not up to the people of the book to prove their book is uncorrupted, but up to the Muhammadans to do so based on any original book that would show these corruptions. The interpreters of the Quran repeatedly denigrate and accuse both the Jews and Christians of having tampered with and corrupted their holy book to suit their with as yet unexplained and unidentified nefarious purposes. These evil, mendacious, and unsubstantiated accusations are in fact introduced to cover up the incredibly huge number of unexplainable and, and irreconcilable differences in both the Quran and its interpretations with the same events as described in their original versions in the Bible and scriptures. Hence, with an extremely simple and general sentence they, the followers of Muhammad, attempt to dismiss and gloss over all these discrepancies as items that have been modified deliberately and presumably with diabolical premeditation by the Jews and Christians to deprive Muhammad and his followers of their rightful place among the divinely revealed scriptures. Unfortunately for the Muhammadan accusers, it can be easily demonstrated that in all its relevant verses, the Quran declares the Bible to be a true revelation of Allah and demands faith in it, such as can be shown in the following surahs, which presuppose the availability of the true revelation of Allah to the Arabs at the time of Muhammad. Surah Al-Baqarah 2.136 Say ye, we believe in Allah and the revelation given to us and to Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob, and the tribes, and that given to Moses and Jesus. Al-Baqarah 2.285 The Apostle believeth in what has been revealed to him from his Lord, as do the men of faith. Each one of them believeth in Allah, his angels, his books, and his apostles. We make no distinction, they say, between one and another of his apostles. In the above verses, the Quran makes no distinction between Allah's revelation. That is, they are all true and uncorrupted. Surah Ali Amran 3.3 It is he who sent down to thee step by step in truth the book, confirming what went before it. And he sent down law of Moses and the gospel of Jesus before this as a guide to mankind. And he sent down the criterion of judgment between right and wrong. Nowhere does the Quran even imply that the people of the book had corrupted the texts of their scriptures, but only that some of them misrepresented the meaning of some texts. 3.93 All food was lawful to the children of Israel except what Israel made unlawful for itself before the law of Moses was revealed. In the particular case above, the Quran implies that the children of Israel corrupted some of Allah's commands before the revelations to Moses and not after. Surah An-Nisa 4.47 O ye people of the book, 
believe in what we have now revealed, confirming what was already with you. If, as Al-Khazim and other followers of Muhammad insist that the people of the book have corrected the books, they could have done this only after Muhammad's Quran and not before. Since this verse clearly shows that the Quran is confirming these same previous revelations and would not have done so if they had already been corrupted. Surah Al-Ma'idah 5.44 It was we who revealed the law to Moses. Therein was guidance and light. By its standard have been judged the Jews by the Prophet who bowed as in Islam to Allah's will, by the rabbis and the doctors of law, for to them was entrusted the protection of Allah's book, and they were witnesses thereto. In the verse above, the Quran asserts that the Jews were entrusted with protecting and preserving Allah's book, the Torah. And there is no indication given here that they failed that trust, especially since it was because they had done so that Muhammad was able to bring about the Quran as a scripture to his own pagan people. Since the followers of Muhammad are certain that the people of the book had deliberately corrupted their books, then the onus is on them to show the original uncorrupted ones upon which they base their puerile and unsubstantiated allegations. Al-Anam 6.91 say, Who then sent down the book which Moses brought, a light and a guidance to mankind? Al-Anam 6.92 And this is a book which we have revealed bringing blessings and confirming the revelations which came before it. It would defy logic and intellect to believe that the Quran would have used corrupted books as confirmation of its own authenticity. Nowhere does the Quran ever imply that the text of this scriptures of the people of the book had been tampered with or corrupted. Since this is the case, then any alleged corruptions would have had to have happened after the Quranic revelations. If so, then the Muhammadan accusers have an unenviable intellectual, theological and historical magical act to perform. One, they have to prove the most stupendous and massive literary editing ever performed in the history of humanity that the Jews and Christians were able to alter the text of every single book of theirs all over the world, in every country, in all the languages that the Bible was written in, with the consent, agreement, and collusion of all the Jewish rabbis, as with all the Christian priests, without leaving a single copy of any original Bible. Two, to believe that the Jews and Christians were able to accomplish all the above without leaving a trace of such a conspiracy requires a human mind and intellect that also believes in flying elephants and that the moon is made of cheese. 3. The listener should be aware that every commentary in every Quran attempting to explain the Quranic verses is based upon the very same allegedly corrupted Bibles. 4. The onus is upon the followers of Muhammad to prove their case by showing mankind a single, original, uncorrupted Bible upon which they can rest their fallacious, insane, contemptible, and ignoramus allegations. For it is the simple case of put up or shut up.